Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Excited about this video. Not very often get to do a care video on plants that don't need a ton of information on how to grow them because they're so incredibly easy to grow, forgiving, don't need a lot of light, just simple. Seems like whenever I'm doing a care video over here, it's usually a plant that has a lot of questions that come along with it, a lot of troubleshooting. Not the case today. These are aglionemas. Aglionemas, also known as the Chinese evergreens, very, very, very common popular house plant. Two different beautiful plants sitting right in front of me. Neither one of them have a variety tag on them, so I'm not going to bother trying to guess. There are 24 at least, I believe, different species of aglionemas and tons of different cultivars go along with that. A lot of them look very similar and that's why I'm not gonna try and give them the name. It doesn't really matter what kind they are unless you're growing like maybe the Pictum tricolor something more exotic. But if you picked one up from a big box store and it just says aglionema, care should be pretty straightforward and simple. I'll be real brief here with the quick care, not a ton to say with it because they're simple to grow plants. Things can go over the troubleshooting FAQs and I might elaborate on some of the details of the quick care in just a moment. Glonemas, Chinese evergreens. As far as lighting is concerned, they don't need a lot of it. You can keep them in a low light situation. They should be fine. Just keep them out of direct sun. The more variegation, the more light the plant will need. So that's something to keep in mind. As far as watering is concerned, pretty simple. Just water when the top one or two inches of soil feels dry. Generally, the more humidity you have in the place where you're keeping them, the longer you can go without watering them. They can dry out a, a decent amount in between waterings, really, but it's best to go ahead and keep the soil consistently moist. They don't need much as far as fertilizer is concerned during the active growing season. Fertilize mine with an all-purpose, just 20-20-20 fertilizer, maybe three or four times, like maybe every other month is probably how often I fertilize them. Pot them up into an all-purpose potting mix. As long as it drains well, it should be fine. More organic matter, probably the better, but they're so sturdy it doesn't really matter. The main thing is that these never sit in water because that can lead to rot. Give them a repot every couple of years, bump them up one to two inches on the outside of diameter. Solid growth, roots coming off the surface of the soil, the bottom of the soil, the pot is feeling firm. Those are all signs it's time to go ahead and move the plant up into a larger container. They are supposed to be plants that like a decent amount of humidity, but I've never had humidity struggles keeping aglionemas in the house where things are fairly dry. We've seen them in office spaces and hotels and all of these buildings where you know they're not maintaining humidity and they usually look pretty good. But if you're having a lot of brown edges and the soil staying consistently moist, there aren't drafts blowing on it, maybe consider surrounding it with some other moisture loving plants that'll help bring the humidity up right around that particular plant. Not a lot to worry about with pests and disease with these plants outside from your common things like root rot, but it doesn't hurt to watch out for spider mites, mealybug, and scale. Those will sometimes pop up. Small plant, easy to take it to a sink and blast them off with water maybe once a month or so, and that can help keep those issues at bay. Hopefully that won't be much of an issue at all. They are toxic, so keep it away from curious mouths if you think you might have a pet or human that might chew on the foliage. Simple. The only thing that I'll elaborate on some more with these is just the watering. It's only because they're more prone to rotting out if they stay too wet or they sit in the soil. And it's easy, very easy to go too long without watering them. You can see this one right here, bone dry. And I actually picked these up from the store solely for this video, which I don't do that often. Usually if I'm filming a care video, it's about something I already have. I've kept plenty of them in the past. They usually last a fairly long time. And then I go, eh, I'm bored with you. I need space for something else. This one's in a container without any drainage in the bottom. And since it's bone dry right now, I'll go ahead and give it a drink and then allow it to sit in that container for probably 15 or 20 minutes. Just to let that moisture wick back up. You can see the foliage on this one. It's somewhat limp and flaccid. This leaf should be up. It shouldn't be curled quite to that degree. It's just because the plant's thirsty. I went ahead and let it dry out for the sake of the video. This one I picked up because it looked kind of crummy. Not something I'll normally do when I'm shopping for a house plant, but I figured there's enough to talk about on this one that might be useful to people. You can see some broken foliage here that's browned out. You can prune these off. It's no big deal. They respond just fine to pruning. Cut it right out. Yellowing from the lower growth on the way up usually means there's a nitrogen deficiency. So that's not really something you should have to worry about with an aglonema because they just aren't really nutrient hogs. But if you're noticing that, give it some fertilizer, maybe some fresh soil. Signs that the air is too dry or there's a draft or you've been letting the plant dry out too much you may see some curled up foliage like this right here with some brown along that edge. Despite being in a self-watering container, I'm guessing this one went just a little bit too long without some water or the other possibility there with the leaf curled up like that. That's something you see sometimes on plants that are getting too much light, having the leaf curled up 
can be a protective mechanism. I don't think that's what's going on with this one, only because all the rest of the foliage looks fine. There is a one spot that maybe that could have been some scorching, but I don't really think it was. I'm pretty sure it was just a damaged leaf. You see, this one's in a self-watering container. That's nice and nifty. This one probably will not have to be watered very often at all, as long as that reservoir stays full. Maybe twice a month, if even. And I really have to say, for the other one over here that's not in a self-watering container, that's about how often I would probably water this one too. That is during the winter time when it's inside and they're not doing a ton of growing. The more warmth, the more light, the more water the plants are going to need. This time of year, they're just kind of chilling. Start noticing any sort of extreme yellowing. I don't know why I zoomed in. There's no yellowing on this leaf, but it, I don't know, it looks pretty. Lots of yellowing, maybe some orange spots on the inside. That can be a sign that maybe there's something wants disease. Check the soil, see if it's staying too moist. Give it a sniff smells bad, there could be some rot going on. Again, as long as you don't let the plant stay wet for too terribly long, it's not something you should have to worry about. And something that doesn't get talked about often enough, they flower. I, maybe it's because it's an inconspicuous aeroidy flower. It's still fun to have around. So this one is actually done flowering. I've had both of these sitting around for about a month now. It went into flower, mm, I don't know, maybe a week ago. Just your typical aeroid type of flower. It looks somewhat like a spathophyllum. There's a big spath behind it and then that fun corm in the middle. You can see what's left over from that old spath down below. Had another one right there. If your aglaonema is getting kind of leggy and stretched out, probably just means it needs some more light. I would move it into a spot where it will get more light and you might need to give it a prune. When that happens, you can just take your pruners and you can literally just go in and cut them right in the middle. They'll flush back out with new growth right from where you cut them and fill back out and start to get more bushy again. Propagate them by division and cuttings typically how it's done. I'd wait till the plant gets to be more mature so that there's some stem on the inside. They will develop a slightly woody stem as that elongates. You can cut that off, cut it into segments, air layer it, or you can just root it into some sphagnum moss, keep it very humid around the plant. They're pretty slow to get going if you propagate them from cuttings. Division is really the most common method. If you want more of them, so just let them go ahead and fill on out and then you can go and lift them out of the soil use something clean and divide the plants with a sharp blade. Tipper them out and repot them, pretty easy stuff. And that's gonna do it. Like I said, there's just not a ton that has to be said with these because they're so easy to grow. Keep them out of direct light, don't overwater them, just keep the soil consistently moist. And if you don't, it'll probably be okay too. Turn enough spent foliage as needed and fertilize a few times a year during the growing season with an all-purpose fertilizer. Pretty much it. Could make it a long video, but it doesn't need to be. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below tips, tricks, suggestions, some of your favorite cultivars. Let us all know. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.